It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey, just like Bomb here. And you are... Nobody. Just an absolute nobody. Yeah, just an absolute nobody who's black. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so <laughs> so my, my name is not really important, so obviously I don't need to introduce myself. Right, you're just a black slave, of course. Yeah, with my white slave master, which is obviously you. Yeah, anyway, so we're going to talk about Alita Battle Angel, the, you know, uh, Newest film by what was his name again? Director. The director is Robert Rodriguez. He made movies such as Grindhouse, uh, Sin City, El Mariachi, Desperado, Spy Kids, and it was also produced by uh, James Cameron, the guy who made Terminator and Aliens. Oh and, man, wait! Did you say Spy Kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, Robert Rodriguez made Spy Kids. Besides, and Machete. Yes, he did. And he made Alita. Yeah, he directed it. That is hilarious. Yeah, like he he can make all these adult movies, but like with those kids movies, is like it's also kind of cringy, though. I mean, it's like that one, like it's just so like. I mean, the dinkster is here, or whatever that kind of joke it was. Don't want to ring the dinkster. <laughs> right, right. It's just so funny too. It's also like James Cameron, like his movies are also pretty good too. Like uh, Terminator was pretty awesome. The second one was even better than the first one. Aliens is actually considered to be better than the first Alien movie. Uh, he also did Titanic and um, also Avatar. Like it's kind of funny because when I went to see Avatar, it was like a humongous line. Like everybody wanted to see that movie so badly back in 20 2009. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Like. It was like I think it was pretty good for what it was. It was okay. Like it kind of hyped up the idea of 3D, and ever since like that movie, it's like everybody wanted to cash in on 3D. Though I mean, I preferred Avatar when it was the last Airbender, but then the live action last Airbender was terrible because of Am Light Shyamalan, right? Yeah, Shyamalan, a ding dong, whatever nonsense that was. <laughs> It was just so bad. Like, it's kind of funny because in the beginning, he was known for making these really good horror movies. What the twist? The, yeah, like, it was the, the the Sixth Sense. There was also The Village. He also did Lady in the Water, too. That was pretty interesting. <laughs> Lady in the Water, I've never seen that one. Was like, that... And like, it has, a, you know, that guy, Paul Giamology? Yeah, I remember him. He was, like, also, in, like, Spider-Man or something. Like, he was movie. also, like, uh... That blue guy in my big fat liar. That was him. Yeah, that was, that, yeah, that was him. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it was. So yeah, it has Paul Giamangi as. Uh, I'm blue. No, no, not sad blue. Blue, blue. Yeah. Wonderful he, blue. He he plays like the guy. He sees the mermaid in the swimming pool and just tries to help her out in that movie. <laughs> Like what, like Aquaman? I guess. That's what I'm an Aquaman. I get an Aquaman. Like this dude, like Aquaman's dad, sees this like half human, half fish woman, and he brings her to his house. He eats his goldfish. <laughs> uh, I'm not surprised about that. But I mean, that's basically what happens. So, I mean, uh, uh, it's kind of like that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, basically. All right, so. Uh, we got like some good talent right here. We got guy who made Terminator, guy who made Spy Kids, uh, great combo. Uh, aliens, right? Something. Yeah, Aliens and Terminator and and also Titanic and Avatar. Yeah. So you know, uh, we already got people who are good at making like uh, very good movies already by default, and we got like Rosa Salazar who. She's just a genuinely a very nice person. Very. Have kind. you heard about her prior to this movie? Because I haven't. No, but I've watched her interviews. Uh, you know, she's 
very down to earth and humble about what she's done, really. It's kind of funny because that down to earth personality also transitioned well for the movie because she also plays a character who's just so down to earth. Yeah, like she was saying, you know, <laughs> how like she like she's just she's just she was saying how she just really appreciates and respects her dad and like the directors who really she, she, they said that they empowered her and that they've really you know helped her out in life because of this and you know. She was just saying how, you know, that this character, Alita, you know, it's good for females who want representation, but more importantly, it's like relatable to everyone. Like, it's not just relatable to women, it's relatable to guys as well. Right. Like, when I saw that scene where she starts to eat the orange for the first time in the chocolate bar, it's like, oh my God, this is so cute. This is like the cutest thing I've probably seen. It's like, uh, you took an anime character and put it on the base screen for a reel this time. <laughs> yeah, because like usually these anime adaptations are just terrible. Like <laughs> I've seen plenty of bad anime movies. And it was like, of course, Dragon Ball Evolution is so bad. And don't also... even think about Dragon Ball Evolution. Dragon Ball Evolution is like, oh my god, you know. I don't even know if I would want to, like, because every time I talk about Dragon Ball Evolution, that would be an hour by itself. <laughs> and, of course, we, we we also saw the movie uh, Death Note, the American adaptation of it. I I don't even know if that's better or worse. I mean, I think that it's maybe, like, better, but, like, on, like, a small amount, like, maybe, like, 1% better, but only because I care more about Dragon Ball than Death Note. It's kind of funny because, like, Death Note in the American version for the movie for Netflix, it was actually way gorier than the show. Yeah, like, that's actually kind of hilarious. It's, like, trying to be a horror movie, but it's... Not the actual really. manga itself was actually... The actual manga itself was more about mind games, not about graphic violence. Right, it's the same thing for the anime, too. It was like, i never seen that much, if any, gore in the anime at all. Yeah, like, there was, like, basically none the creepiest thing i guess was like some of the visuals with like the shinigami and like the different types of depths but it was mostly just like those small instances it was never really the big focus of let's just show a bunch of people getting impaled or getting their heads just lopped off by ladders nothing like that Oh, no, no. It's also kind of funny because they turn, like, uh, L into a black dude and, <laughs> and of course, light into, like, the white guy. That you... was just random casting, yeah. really. It really is. Like, I if, mean, like... That would make more... It's kind of funny because, like, Japan made their own movies of Death Note, and they have an all-Japanese cast. So... Yeah, that's the thing. Like, there was actually a Japanese guy working on this, too, but, like... You know, I would think that they would want to choose a Japanese person to play L. Right. <laughs> I mean, if anyone else, he definitely seemed like he was like L in this show was definitely kind of a weirdo. I got you know, like he was like maybe mixed. He could have been like anything. I mean, if they wanted to go with anything, you know, he should have been like I don't know some sort of mixed or something because he like he had some sort of thing going on where he was just strange. What do you think about the visuals of um, Alita? Um, okay, so I never really read the manga, right? So, you haven't read the manga either. I mean, you watch the show, I think, the anime. I only heard about the anime, but I never read the manga. Okay, so like, I like how it looked in the in the movie, but how's it, how does it compare like to what you saw before? Uh, in comparison to what I seen, at least briefly, I think it just. Uh, it looks kind of similar to what I saw from the anime. Like, I mean, I, I, I like it. Like, it looked like visually stunning. I think you know, very beautiful. Yeah, I remember. Like, I think James Cameron he got in the rights to it, like a many, many, many years ago. But like, the project was on hiatus for many years before he actually made it. Yeah, well, um, you know, I just I think that they did a really good job on the effects on the surroundings and the, you know, just the how the city works basically. At least the the few bits that we saw, like, there's still plenty of story to be told here about like what's going on in that other location. Like, 
All right. The funny thing about it is that uh, Robert Rodriguez is actually known for um, for doing a lot of stuff himself. Like like in this movie, he is actually the only director. But usually for his other movies, he's like the director, the producer, the cameraman, the guy who does the special effects. Sometimes he's nicknamed like the one man crew for when he does his movies. Like most of them, it's like he's most of the crew for a lot of them. Hmm, interesting. But I guess they couldn't afford it because it's a much more bigger budget. Like a lot of the movies he shot prior to Alita. Yeah, this actually- one costs a lot of money. It's really. It's been struggling to get you know enough money back. That's kind of a thing. I think it like wasn't it like a hundred million for it to be made. Um, I have to verify that, but probably around there. And it like it's been trying like really hard with everyone just like going to see it. Like there's a big you know the leader challenge. You know everyone's just been trying to go see it. Some people in my comment section said that they went to see it like 10 or more times. It's incredible. And it's reached like 400 million last time I checked. Yeah, like basically the future of the franchise for the American adaptation, I guess, relies heavily on people just wanting to see it. Because basically, not only was it competing against these other blockbusters like Captain Marvel, but (laughs) it had also been competing with other movies. Like there was this... Of course, one movie I saw, Us, and there were like a lot of people to see the movie Us because supposedly it's a scarier movie. But when I saw that movie, it was not scary to me. Oh yeah, you made a review on your At channel. It was you? Like, like you thought it was just like just worse than uh, I mean the uh, Get Out. Get Out. Yeah, it's actually worse than Get Out in my opinion. Like, like even like there's some moments in Us where it's supposed to be funny. But then, like, there's other moments that are just unintentionally funny. Because there was, like, this one scene, right? When they finally meet the double gangers, they have, like, this voice. It's supposed to be scary. Like, hi, I'm your double ganger. I'm going to get rid of you. And it's like, are you serious? Why would you sound like that? <laughs> so, like, recently, Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. Kind of like Return of the Living Dead. Like, like, send more doctors. Yeah, yeah. It's so, the funny thing is, like, Returning the Loving Dead was actually advertised as a horror comedy. This one is not really advertised as a funny thing. So, when I first I mean, I got, I mean, the trailers are pretty creepy. Yeah, like, the trailers are creepy, but, like, the, the actual movie is not that creepy. Yeah. It's like the, it's like the trailers are actually better than the movie. It's kind of sad. All right, let's go back a little bit on topic, just a little bit. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But, like, um, one of the characters, of course, is the person that finds Alita in the freaking garbage bin place. Whatever. It wasn't really a garbage bin. It was, like, a waste dump. Waste, waste dump. Okay. Yeah, like, that was a nice scene, I thought. You know, just, it's just, you you kind of, like, see dude through, like, the doctor's perspective, Dr. Ito, like... He's just going around looking for stuff, looking for parts, and you just see her down there. It's like you see potential. You see that you know, kind of like you know the idea of a doctor is like that they they see the good in people or try to bring it out of people. You know. Oh yeah, and what's so funny about this is that the character for the doctor is actually played by a famous uh, German act, not German Austrian actor. His name is uh, Christoph Ross. Like, Christoph Ross, he played, like, movies like uh, Quentin Tarantino's and Glorious Bastards is one famous example. And, uh, like, another example of his uh, work is a movie, D- Jingle Unchained, where he basically is, like, that guy who actually helps Jingle out from the Slave Masters. Oh, really? Yeah. I had not seen that one. I mean, we've got to watch it sometime. It is also directed by Quentin Tarantino. Cool. So basically, he seems to be an established actor, and he does a good job at portraying his characters. Nice. Yeah, you can tell the you know the you know he really he like you know when he was like, first appeared, like he was just like just we just saw him as the doctor, the nice regular guy. But then he's like actually like a really cool like freaking assassin too. Like he's like a, a hunter killer. That's that's really cool. And he like he's at the same way, but it's just like it's like a different dimension to him as well. 
Like he has like that that whole I want to help people, and then like I want to get revenge aspect. It's that's really nice. It's like some sort of conflict of interest. Like it's like one hand I want to help you, I just yeah, because of what happened to his daughter. You know? yeah, his his daughter. Right. Oh, we should I put spoiler in the title actually? Well, uh, you could probably do it later once we're done. But like, uh, yeah, his daughter was named Alita, and that was really touching. Right. And his, I guess he also was really shy of showing Alita the real world because he didn't want her to get, I guess, influenced by it. Yeah, but like his, like his daughter, who was actually in a wheelchair, like, oh man, that was just. He was just treating one of his patients, you know, like a like a regular doctor would. And then one of those guys goes berserk and just kills her. Now that's just gruesome. Yeah. And you know, yeah. kind of I can see why he would end up going and like becoming one of those hunter killers. Right. Which is kind of funny because when he was facing against that one metal guy, then Alita starts to remember her pass and starts to regain her powers to defeat those monsters. Yeah, like some guy. What was his name again? I don't even remember. I forgot. It's like some really hunky metal half-human guy. Like, I, I know what he looked like. That dude... Oh, man. he was. I like how he kept coming back. Like He was recurring. That was really cool. Yeah, like the first fight she had with him, of course, she kicks his butt. But then the second fight, he basically kicked her butt. All right, so let's see. Uh, um, let's see. There's a lot of motion capture in this. You could tell, like, it did a really good job of like making everyone, especially Alita, like she was clearly like a cyborg. Well, I mean, we get technical, like, would it be an android actually, or like android? Is android half human, half robot, or is it like, uh. or is it cyborg? Well, let me look up the definition of an Android really quickly. And once you go to Google and you find the definition of Android, it's basically a robot with a human appearance. So that's, by definition, Android, yeah. So what is she? I mean, like, this like a, like a human brain. Is that what she had or something? Apparently, like, in the movie, it said that she had, like, a human heart. Yeah, and but that, wait, you had a brain. human heart? Yeah, I think a heart and a brain. But she opened her heart and it was ro- like robotic. Uh, wait remember, a second, her, remember like she, she went to like the Hugo and she was like, I'll, I'll give you my heart literally. And it was like totally mechanical. I mean, if that was okay. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it might have been a brain, my mistake. Yeah, that might, was I guess we had a little rusty on that little detail. <laughs> that would have just, oh, yeah, I think her. it was like uh, her, um, her heart. Not, not, yeah, no, yeah, her brain, excuse me. All right, uh, let's just talk about like the rest of the characters. Let's see. We went over to Ido a bit. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I like his dynamic with Alita, too. Like, how he's, like, protective, but with good purpose. And how, you know, it's actually, like, a, a little bit of portion out of this film. is just about how the two of them, they go from being just a creator and createe to, like, legitimate father-daughter relationship going. Okay, should we talk about the love interest, too? Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to get to that. I was just... Everyone hates Hugo, you know? I mean, I think he's okay. I mean, I see him worse. I mean, I... you should, like, see, like, the comments online. Like, almost everyone hates Hugo. Like, they're like, why did he, like, become the love interest? Why do people like him? Like, why does she fall so deeply? Like, everyone hates him and thinks that he was useless. Yeah, like, almost everyone I've seen hates him. I mean, I don't really like the character either too much, but I don't really hate him either. He's just right. kind of dead. It's like, so basically his background is that he tries to gather the bolts and stuff from these robots by just... Yeah, he works for, like, he works for this guy. I'm, yeah. We're gonna catch, like, let's just cover each character, like, one at a time, really. But, like, Hugo is, like, he's just kind of, like, we, when we first meet him, He's just there to introduce Alita to the world. That's all he does. He's just there. And I mean, I can kind of almost get why she likes him from the beginning because he saves her life. At least that's kind of how, you know, like if this was a regular Disney movie, he really would have just been like 
you know, a regular hero. He just came out of nowhere and just saved her. But then, like, she came out and just saved the dog. It was like, yeah, that's... that's <laughs> Yeah, like if it was like if she wasn't for the whole cyborg aspect, then yo, like he would have really legitimately saved her. That was like, that's a good first impression, I think. It's also funny because like she actually saved him twice, and the second time, of course, he really, really did die. The first time, he just <laughs> yeah. Let's just break order. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, he first we just see him. He's just you know just a generic dude. Just introduce. And he's there teaching her about like some of the land and stuff about his dream apparently going to the other place. Oh yeah, and and then we learned that he has this other part of him where he's just like okay with just destroying cyborgs, giving away their parts to people. That was just a turn out left field, but I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, like the whole change of personality. I guess maybe she changed him in a way that I guess he didn't think of before. Yeah. And started, I mean, like, to, and started to develop feelings and, of course, feel like he's in love. Yeah, it's kind of like she basically made him into not a racist. <laughs> not like how hanging out with you made me sure that I'm not a racist by hanging out with you, kind of. Right. It's like, oh, I, I actually care about robots now. Yeah, that, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, like, I... I kissed a robot, and now I'm robosexual. It means I can't hate robots anymore. <laughs> robosexual. <laughs> okay, well, what do you prefer, like, poster sexual? Is that better? Like, Lando Calrissian now and pansexual? <laughs> I mean, what do you want to call well, it? Techno toaster? I don't know. Fan? Techno banging? <laughs> Like, it was weird, like, you know, it's like, it's, it's kind of like, you know, like that, like that movie, you know, with like, Shape of Water. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that's like pure beast. Screwing now. Nemo, like. Screwing Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> Screwing Nemo, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> oh my fuck. <laughs> I mean, like, I can, I, I've seen a lot of weird romances. But, you know, I can say that, you know, that this one's probably the, the least weird because, you know, like, uh, at least she looks like a human. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, man. I, I, I have to get back to shape. Okay, so stop laughing, Tyler. You know, at, okay. at least, at least so she anyway. looks like a human. So it's like, I can, like, at least with from that one. Like, I see they have chemistry, I think, you know, I mean, like, they have something. I mean, it was kind of like, you know, I think that they weren't really strong. I mean, like, they didn't know each other maybe, like, I don't know how long they were together, but she was already, like, let's run away together. That was kind of fast, you know? Right, right. But, man, just, oh, my God. So, I think, honestly, he's not the worst character I've seen for a love entrance. Though, as for, I, I mean, he probably is like the best of the genre, one of the best, but like usually love interests are not like that interesting anyway. Like, I mean, you know, I think it's just like more of a well personality, I think, maybe. I just think, like, I think usually, like, in terms of personality, like movies tend to have, like, of course, better villains than heroes or better love interests. I don't know, the villain in this one, I think, was probably one of the weaker elements in this one, yeah. Like, I mean, the villain here was kind of just there, really. He was kind of not really the star. He was just kind of there for me, the villain. Right. It's like, oh, just try to attack Alita, and that's it. And then also, he also got, like, this, uh, I think, scientist or doctor, whatever it was she was. I remember, okay, uh, there's this woman. Uh, her name is Chirin. She yeah. was, remember, like, that was, like, Alita, like, the... Uh, the, the human Alita's mother and uh, Dr. Edo's wife before they had a divorce. Right. And they were trying to like return to like uh, a place, I think it was called Zalem or something. Zale was that was that, that reference to that spaceship thing? Uh maybe, but like yeah. I think that's what they called the place of like the, the place that's like above them. That's where Alita originally came from, apparently. Yeah, okay. I think that's referred to that space thing that they wanted to see in the movie. 
You kept, I think so. Well, like, so like, I think that, you know, yeah. So there was just something apparently yeah. where she was working for this guy Vector, just like how, like that one guy uh, Hugo. They were, were working for Vector, and like they're doing immoral things. But like Alita brings out the good in them. That's pretty nice. Right, and also it's kind of interesting how she slowly regains her memory through these fights. Like before, she had no idea, like saying, oh my god, apples and, I mean, not apples, but oranges and chocolate taste so good. I want to play, like, racing and stuff. It's like, oh no, you can't go racing because that's too dangerous. It's like, it's like, it's slow, it's, it's gradual, but it's also really fun to see how she just transitioned to a stronger character. Uh, yeah. But yeah, about cheering, like, yeah, apparently just like, you know, it, it took seeing Alita's humanity that really just brought her back to like the whole part where like, you know, like how both like Ido was trying to help people, like, uh, like it reminded her that she was trying to help people too originally before she became more selfish and devious. Right. And also, uh, one thing I find really interesting, let's see, we talked about Alita, we talked about the love interest, we talked about... Dr. Ido and Sharon. Right. Yeah. Also, she had, like, this weird diamond on her forehead. What was the diamond thing again? Uh, the diamond. Yeah, there's a diamond uh, on her forehead. I can't remember right now. Okay, well, uh, whatever that was. But like okay, so like let's talk about Vector now. Like he was just like, like the black guy, or whatever. Who was it? Like the main antagonist who was being actually being controlled by Edward Norton, by the way. Honestly, he's like the least intimidating villain I've ever seen. I mean, he's he kind of reminds me of like L basically because like both of them are just kind of weird dudes who just don't really do much. But then we find <laughs> out that at least he, at least he had like a reason, you know, like. I'm talking, I'm talking about like the, the Netflix L. Like Netflix L was just kind of weird and emotional, but this guy, you know, <laughs> he was just kind of like having these like, like anxiety attacks or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, he's a villain, but he's kind of sensitive. It seemed like, but the, it's like it makes like he was being controlled basically, so it makes sense to me now. Honestly, like I would want to see more of like the Edward Norton villain as the actual villain for this movie than that villain we had. Yeah, at least that guy seemed more interesting at least. It, it uh, gotta be better from here. It has to be. Like, that whole tease at the end just makes me want to have sequels to see just how bad he is. Yeah, I, like, after I saw... I wasn't really sure at first, you know, but it was like, that was the perfect segue for, like, another movie. It's exactly. Like, it's like, like, see, like... What happens, like, okay... Now she has a goal, and she lost her honey, so now she wants to go over there and like get revenge. Right. And you know then, and we, you know, we like a lead after everything happened. We, you know, she was just, she was just really like trying to do the right thing the entire movie, and this guy's just being so mean. And you know, it's like you really feel like you have a connection with the character. So when she's like upset because what what this guy just did to Hugo basically, and tried to just kill him, and how she just wrecked almost everyone else in the movie, like, cheering and everything, it's like, you really want to see her just go back and kick his ass, basically. <laughs> right. And also, um, one thing that's pretty funny about, like, um, this whole movie, like, there's this one scene where, basically, she goes into a bar and just talks smack, then one of the villains I mean, just kills, yeah, like, a dog. Yeah, he, he kills a dog, and then after oh, wait, no, like, that, was, that was that was that was the brute that was the brute like the big brute guy that she like has to keep fighting. But I'm like the, the pan was that guy with the sword, like that that really cool like sword. I I wanted one of those like, right? Like he had that sword, and, like at least just totally just stole that from him. That was awesome. Right. And the funny thing about that sword actually was that like in the manga she had that from the get go apparently, or like. Well, not the get go, but like that's like it's like in all the big art I see, like of the manga, she has that sword, and it's like I like how the the movie actually added that backstory where we said she she got that sword from this guy Zapan. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Also, Zapan, like in the manga, from what I read, that dude goes totally insane, even more than what we do in the movie. Obviously. I mean, like the, the Japanese, like Todd, like you should like see the stuff like in the manga. Like I read some of that stuff. Like 
he goes totally like messed up and ugh. <laughs> right. Yeah. But like okay, like you're talking like that, that bald guy, right? Right. Yeah, he killed a dog. He like he literally killed a dog. <laughs> like, how dare you kill my dog? I'm gonna get back to you. I mean, I've seen people like you know, I've heard the trope called you know kick the dog, but they literally went to, and just they like, killed the dog. Yeah. Right? I mean, it was implied off screen and didn't show it on screen, but it's like, why? You know, I, I was all like, the, the post was all the blood on her face, like, you know, or her putting, like, I thought it was like maybe like warrior paint on her face. Right. I didn't think it was actually dog blood. <laughs> oh, man. That's kind of morbid. Oh, like, don't kill man's best friend. Yeah, like, I mean, I, jeez. You can tell he's evil because of that. <laughs> Yeah, that's see, he just kills it, it was okay when he was killing humans, but when he killed a dog, that's when it was too far. <laughs> that, that's that, that, that's too far. Don't yeah, kill your you can dog. kill a bunch of humans and cyborgs, but if you kill the dog, no, that's evil. <laughs> oh my goodness, like that was just too funny for me. I mean, it's kind of like it's funny, but also like that's that is still mean. I do like though how that. <laughs> How that like that dog owner did come back to like help Alita though, because like he had principles. Uh -huh. You can't kill the dog. Yeah, because that dude like he, he was only in the movie for a couple of minutes. He was only in the movie for a couple of minutes, but he left a good impression. He was just like, <laughs> care about dogs. You know, I may be a hunter killer, but I still care about pets. They're man's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, is it still like most of these movies that I watch? The pets end up being like the sidekick. Like, there's Mulan, where the horse is like the sidekick and the dragon is, and then and also the fly or you no know, cricket actually, and also the freaking Pocahontas. Like Pocahontas, when I we watched it with you, was actually, huh, like more racist than I realized. Really, the savages, savages, barely. Basically, the human is the result of. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, oh my! That was actually I can't believe I actually watched that when I was little. That oh. flew out, that flew over my head when I was watching that when I was a kid. Oh man, uh, maybe people should watch that nowadays to learn about how people should like work together without discriminating each against each other. Right, right, right. So it was of course the raccoon and that that bird uh, and that dog. Yeah, and the and talking that, tree. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the road to El Dorado has, of course, the horse again. Oh Something yeah, with the that, horse. Oh, uh, let's see that. And also, like they had those weird, like, like I think armadillo things that just kind of go into a ball. Yeah. So basically, one thing I learned about movies is that you'd never mess with a person's pet. Yeah. Ever. He killed it for an entire movie, and then he just kills it off all suddenly. <laughs> And he, like, I mean, like, that was just cruel. Like, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm so evil, I'm going to kill a dog. <laughs> I'm not even provoked, but I'm going to just kill it, just to kill it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, 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 that guy is horrible, you know, that guy is literally Hitler. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. Literally Hitler. You know what else is literally Hitler? The president? <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Oh man, if people hear that, they're gonna be so mad at me. But you know, that's I, I'm not. I'm just joking. I'm I'm really joking. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> people, of people, people are like of people. Are, like they literally think that the president is Hitler. <laughs> uh, just the lovely world of politics and confusion behind it. Just yeah, I don't, I don't care what people believe politically, but man, like the teachers, like these college professors, they're all like. Oh, he literally is a fascist. He literally is Hitler. That's what they say. <laughs> oh, man. Like, if you just tell the stories of your teachers, like, man, it'll probably get tons of views on your channel. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, man. But getting back to Alita. So, what do you think about the possibility of sequels? Do you think it's possible, not possible? They definitely have potential for sequels. I, I mentioned in a previous video that I wanted to see like this become like the next Harry Potter, right? But uh, there is this thing, you know, where 
this movie had like very bad marketing, you know. I mean, it was less money for marketing, which I guess is good for like the budget of the movie, but it had terrible weeks, you know, before the challenge. Like it wasn't making too much until the Alita challenge. That's kind of strange because prior to you telling me about it, I never heard about it. Exactly, you know. So they had terrible marketing. <laughs> yeah, we heard about every other Disney movie. We heard about the freaking Aladdin movie first. This is kind of funny because since Fox is now part of Disney, they could have gotten as much marketing as the other regular Disney movies. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, yeah. But I don't, I, didn't, I didn't even see like the trailer of Lita on YouTube. I didn't even see that much. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad it was. I, I saw the freaking Venom trailer. I saw the Spider-Verse trailer. I saw even Dark Phoenix trailer. I did not see Alita trailer. What the heck? I don't think I've seen the trailer online too. Like they they did this on purpose. They just made it like just a movie, but they weren't gonna make any money. And you know what else? Almost every single media outlet out there was just trashing the movie before it came out, saying how oh this movie just is is never gonna make money. It's it's terrible. And the lead character is too sexy, apparently. Yeah, it's funny because on Rotten Tomatoes during this whole entire controversy, That's Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> so, so basically, they they try to delete people who do not have any interest to see the movie. And once the reviews started to come out, they also started deleting reviews of the it's movie. Like my Captain Marvel, man. It's also for. Oh wait, that that was for Captain Marvel, not Lita. Yeah, you think. Oh my gonna, how could you confuse Captain Marvel with Alita? Oh my goodness. They didn't say Captain America this time. <laughs> hey, I got something wrong, but Benel's name right this time. Damn. <laughs> I got so confused, though, but like, screw Rotten Tomatoes, still. At any case. Yeah, you know, F Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> and you know what? They, they people like, people went, like, you know, they went to like get rid of their accounts, right? Right. But like when people had to remove their accounts, like it wouldn't let them. Huh. Yeah, like if you sign up for Rotten Tomatoes, they won't let you like remove your account because like they want to keep your traffic apparently. They want to force you to pay with their advertisements or whatever. That's kind of like with the Funimation thing. Like I heard that if you try to cancel your subscription to Funimation, it'll be really hard to do that too. Yeah, I understand why. Everyone wants to like leave because of the kick Vic bullcrap. Right. <laughs> And they still have not even like given any like sort of good reasoning behind that anyway. Honestly, like it just if a person wanna, you know, leave a service, they should leave a service, not go through a lot of hurdles to do so. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. But getting back to the controversy with Alita and how Yeah, like we um, like this is this is this is why I titled this stream Whatever You Want, because we keep talking about different things besides Alita. <laughs> right. But, like, she was too sexy. And apparently on Rotten Tomatoes, the user reviews are actually higher compared to, like, the critic reviews. Yeah, those critics, man. Like, I don't know, like, it must be some sort of, like, bias or whatever. Like, they, were, they probably were looking for some sort of, like, thing. Like, I think, you know, all these critics I've seen, they don't really care too much about like certain story based things anymore. Like they care more about themes and like agendas behind movies rather than the movies themselves. It's like I guess you know they get, they get paid, right? They get paid to like watch a bunch of movies, but then they get like desensitized. Like they watch enough movies that they're just like they want something special, something different, you know? Yeah, I remember. So like, I, I remember in the past, like these movie critics are actually were actually taken seriously because there were people like R Roger Ebert, I believe, who started to review movies, and of course they gave them like more objective critiques compared to like we have today. I mean, these are the same critics who gave Ghostbusters like freaking ninety percent. Wow. I mean, so yeah. I, uh, you know, there's clearly some sort of media bias. It's just like they're tired of whatever, or they don't want to get labeled. They, if they give a bad review to certain things, but can give it to other things, like 
I don't trust any sort of like I trust the audience more than I do critics because of this. And I know the audiences can like troll and lie. I know that, but at least they don't have any sort of you know real bias. Right, like when you ask somebody what they honestly think about a movie, they are honest. Whereas somebody who is like a person who supposedly studied film for many years, trying to use it through an ideological lens compared to a regular person. Yeah, it's like I know that some people probably they, mm. you know, they they, they want to support movies because they want to like you know representation or something. But you know, you want to judge a movie equally. You got to look at it. Like equally, you gotta judge it by the same sort of standards you judge like any other movie. The thing about this whole representation thing, like I don't really care if it's like people of different backgrounds or genders or sexualities. I just what's mattered to me the most when I'm watching a movie is the writing, the acting, the production values, like if it's good, if it's not good. Those things matter to me more than just like race and these other things. Yes, yeah, genitalia basically. Yeah. But people, yeah, like, yeah. like I, I literally hear people say, "Well, I like without representation, I would be like really, really not aspiring to be a filmmaker and stuff." Like, come on, dude. like I, I watched like we both watch like shows like Dragon Ball Z. They have mostly Asian cast, and guess what? We're not crying about this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's very really funny, you know, because if if the world we lived in was the one they believe in, right? I wouldn't watch shows like freaking. I wouldn't watch stuff. From like, let's see, what did I watch? Like, I watched stuff like freaking Kim Possible before, and I watched stuff like, let's see, uh, what was it like? My, you also watched, uh, what was it? Ra that's a Raven. Yeah, like I watched that, like not. And then the... <laughs> yeah, I watched that's a Raven. And it was also, it was also Zach and Cody. Yeah, too. I watched like a lot of different Disney Channel shows, like Corey in the House. I remember watching that one too. Right. Yeah, like, it's really funny thinking that, you know, that I have a problem with people's races and sexes when I'm watching a show. But, I don't, you know, I don't feel like defending myself either because, like, these people, they rather just, like, throw insults at each other. Like, they, they rather just spend their time putting comments about how, like, that, oh, the fact that you left a comment here means that you want to go back to, like, the 90s or that, like, you just hate women or something that you're involuntary celibate or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't get how that's supposed to be like insulting anyway. <laughs> yeah, have you, have you got, have you got one of those comments yet, Tyler? I uh, know, I've never been called like an incel race. Yeah, like it's called like incel. Like, I, I don't get how that's an insult. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think that you know that. If anything, people should be praised. Actually, you know that they're not adding to like you know the problem of teenage pregnancy. But okay. <laughs> I, I I I didn't really think it was an insult, but okay. I mean, I guess you know that they think that like you know that you aren't like getting laid, so you hate women. I mean, <laughs> wouldn't it be like the opposite? You know that yeah. I would think that you know that. <gasps> You love women, and that's why you want to, like, have love with them, you know? That's what I would think. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, not everyone's, like, a mate towel, you know? <laughs> right, right. And it's, like, so strange. Like, how could that be an install? But yeah, anyway. Kind of watch out. Like, if you yes. said something bad, like, that you hate Kill Bill, that means you're an incel because you didn't like one movie. <laughs> That's kind of funny because I think Kill Bill is actually pretty oh, good. Sorry, like, too. That's, how, like, that's how it works. Now. Like, the logic is you don't like this one movie, it means you hate all women. That's how it works now. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. What was one movie I did not like that actually have a woman as a lead? Huh. I'm I mean, trying to think like, about that. Every single movie, I, like, it's always like the same freaking list. Like, I made a video. Remember, I showed you that video where it was like, I put all these ones, like, Alien with freaking Ripley. <laughs> I mean, like, I did the Terminator. Like, I did, like, Leia from Star Wars, man. Like, like Edge of Tomorrow, uh, Kill Bill, like, Wonder Woman. Like, there's so many of these movies. And they want to say, like, oh, you didn't like this one. That means that you have this kind of issue. What the heck? 
that that makes sense. Hmm. That's kind of strange because I'm trying to think in my head what is the movie I've seen that has a woman lead that I did not like. That's a good question. Yeah, like, <laughs> and uh, remember Mulan? I actually remember we watched that yeah. one too. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I, yeah. We hate women. Yeah, because we watched Mulan. It was one of the best Disney movies I've ever seen. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's so funny because I remember seeing that in the theater too when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, I bought like a freaking my cousin Frozen. Yeah, I hate women. That's that's how, how it works. <laughs> oh, why did you have to buy her to, to like that? Was just I don't want to hear that song. I like the song. I actually I really like the song in the movie. Like Let It Go. That that is hilarious. I I love that song actually. I I can't stand it after hearing it so long. Those parody songs were grilled, man. Like those parody. I think the parody songs are better than the actual songs. You're cutting off, man. I said, like, the parody songs are better than the actual songs. Oh, yeah. But, oh my goodness. But, um, yeah, for the sequels, I just hope that they actually expand on the universe as was said for the first movie. And that uh, they could probably do it somewhere, like, I don't know, Netflix to probably produce it. Because, obviously, it seems as though it's a certain dedicated audience and not a large audience that appreciates it. Well, you know, I kind of, I kind of have to wonder, Tyler. Do you think that the people who were like propping up Captain Marvel were trying intentionally to downplay Alita? Um, maybe. I'm just kind of wondering because, like, every single media source out there is going about how if you made a video or said something about Captain Marvel, you're a hater, troll, like man, baby, whatever. But then the same ones are saying how Alita can't even break even, apparently. That's what they're saying. And how it can't get a sequel. It's impossible. I mean, uh, wouldn't she ever be too sexy anyway, according to their logic? Yeah, I don't even understand that complaint either, because, I mean, it's never like... It it was never, like, really emphasized in any way that she was, like, sexy. I mean... The thing about her, I mean, she looked like a regular person to me, and I mean, the only thing that was kind of weird was her eyes. That was kind of yeah, but you like know, the, what, like her. Eye, I think her eyes actually tell a million stories. You like look into those deep eyes, and you're like, "Oh yeah, hey baby." <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, it, it's the same thing. Like, I, well, like when, soul. like it's the same thing with Puss and Blues. Like he just stares at you with those eyes. It's like, yeah, you know. Oh. Maybe, maybe those cat eyes are too sexy for them to handle. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's it. Like you look into those anime eyes and it's like, oh yeah, we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently Apparently, it got to like uh, this YouTuber like Sean Dawson. Apparently he said, Oh, I did not do that cat. <laughs> what? Yeah, apparently that was like on like Twitter, I think. Sean Dawson, like he hates cats or something. It's, it's, I think he was saying something like, "I did not screw my cat." What? Did screw his cat? Why would he? <laughs> I guess he said he wanted some puss. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is not really uh, YouTube friendly, is it? <laughs> Demonetized. This is not going to be advertised at all. I, mean, I don't make that. I don't make money off of this anyway. I do this for fun. <laughs> right. Uh, do you want to conclude this, or you want to continue to talk about this? Well, how long have we been going for? I think an hour now. Really? Like it hasn't even felt like it felt like maybe like t- twenty minutes. Oh no, no! I t- kept challenge. Like it was like uh, twelve o'clock before. Now it's one o'clock. Oh, okay. Do Do you want to plug your channel? Uh, sure. My channel is Tyler Preston Twenty, and my social media accounts, of course, on Facebook, Minds dot com, and uh, Twitter is also Tyler Preston Twenty. Oh yes, he wants Patreon money because he's a, a homeless, desperate guy. Yeah, the homeless, desperate guy who definitely did not live with somebody else. Yes, he he needs to get paid because like he is totally like broke, and he's get whipped because he's a slave. Yeah, slave master, whip me, baby. You're making it weird now. 
Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this is my podcast for Alita and other random crap. See ya. Bye. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.